Combat in RuneScape was just updated, and this is the single largest update since the evolution of combat all the way back in 2012. So in this video, let's go over every single change. For starters, splashing has been completely removed from RuneScape and replaced with a damage potential system. This means that instead of hitting full damage or missing entirely in the old roll to hit system, if your accuracy stat, which can be seen in the target information window, is less than 100%, you'll instead deal damage equal to whatever percentage is showing. This makes combat much more consistent and will also allow you to apply buffs or debuffs without having to worry about your accuracy stat. Next up, the critical strike system has been modernized to make critical strikes easier to understand and more powerful when they do happen. In the old system, a critical strike meant you were hitting in the upper bounds of your regular damage, meaning if you rolled a crit, it meant you rolled a high hit, but only slightly more damage than a regular hit. In this modern system, rolling a crit increases the damage dealt by a percentage based on your level, starting at an extra 10% damage at level 1 and ending off at 50% bonus damage at level 90. This means that when you roll a crit, you're also going to see a massive hit splat and you'll be dealing a lot more damage. It's worth noting that this is a slight nerf to necromancy critical strikes, as they previously granted 75% bonus damage at level 120. Now that the critical strike damage cap appears at level 90 and is 50%, necromancy critical strikes are going to deal less damage. Just a quick note that this is not a massive nerf to Necromancy's damage, and it should feel relatively unchanged. Based on some very, very rough math, I think it's going to be between a 2 and a 4% nerf to Necromancy, which is probably fine. Next up, the damage cap for melee range and magic has been raised, from 10,000 all the way up to 30,000. In the old system, stacking damage buffs yielded diminishing returns, as you'd end up consistently up against the cap. This was especially prominent in melee and resulted in many strong abilities and combos underperforming or wasting damage. In this new system, all hits are able to deal 30,000 damage, which should be extremely fun and should make a lot of high damaging abilities and specials even more high damaging and more powerful. Because this raised damage cap is universal, certain items that in the past impacted your damage cap have had to be rebalanced. In the old system, Erethor's Grimoire would give you a raised hit cap, and that effect has now been removed. The same can be said about the Dark Shard of Lang special attack, which previously raised your hit cap even further. This special attack has been completely reworked and is now a high damaging special that will deal a chunk of damage to single targets and is even better on grouped enemies. Next up, we're going to talk about damage ranges. Damage ranges have been squished for all abilities. This keeps the average damage the same, but it reduces variance in your rotation, which makes dealing damage more intuitive and consistent. In the old system, an ability could have a 20 to 100% ability damage range, meaning at times it could deal in 1,000, and at other times, the same ability in the same parameters could deal 5,000 damage. In this new system, this ability would have its average damage remain exactly the same at 60%, but the range would instead be 55% to 65%, making it a lot more consistent. This is extremely good for intuitive learning, because now if you hit a button and it does a lot of damage, you know that it isn't just the ability high rolling and you probably did something good. The next change is a huge one. Every single melee ranged magic and constitution ability has had its tooltip updated. The biggest change here is actual damage values are now shown and update in real time based on what gear you have equipped. This provides significantly better visual clarity and allows players to actually see how much damage different abilities will do. A channeling bar has also been added to the game that will keep track of progress of all channeled abilities. This bar is a UI element and can be moved around within edit mode. This makes it significantly easier to tell when an ability is finished channeling and should help newer players with ability timings significantly. In addition to this, issues with channeled abilities and revolution have now been resolved. In the old system, many channeled abilities would not fire correctly, resulting in lost damage when using revolution. But this has now been fixed, so feel free to use revolution and get the maximum amount of damage at the same time. A number of changes have been made to the action bar system. For starters, action bar slots will now be highlighted whenever they are interacted with. This makes it easy to tell what abilities you're hitting, and when watching others play, this makes it easy to make fun of them for button mashing. In addition to this, the white flash at the start of each global cooldown has now been removed. And last but not least, keybind icons have been made smaller and simplified so it's easier to see the ability icon. In the old system, certain keybinds would cover up the entire ability, which would make it difficult to see what you are hitting. In addition to all of those large core elements, there have been a number of other changes to different systems as well as balance. Let's go over all of those now. The adrenaline gained from critical strikes while under the effects of incendiary shot, tsunami, and meteor strike have been reduced from 10% to 8%. Bleeds like dismember, frag shot, and combust have all been buffed. Previously, these abilities were all misleading because they had a hidden high chance to roll lower in their damage range, but this has now been fixed so they now have an equal chance to roll high as they do low. This is an overall buff to all of these abilities. 
The Fury and Greater Fury abilities have been completely rewritten, and now do the following. Fury is no longer a channeled ability, and it now does 120% average damage, which also increases your chance to strike critically by 25% on the next ability. Greater Fury now does 130% average damage, and the next melee ability used is guaranteed to crit. To compensate for this extreme power spike on this ability, it now has a 15 second cooldown. This is extremely powerful, and it should always be comboed with a high hitting ability. The Sever ability has had its cooldown reduced to 5 seconds, which means it can be used constantly, ultimately resulting in 10% damage reduction at all times when using melee. In addition to the reworked special attack we spoke about earlier, Lang Swords have also been given a new passive called Primordial Ice, which gives a chance of 24% increased damage for 9 seconds. This should make Lang Swords significantly more powerful and allow them to compete a little bit better with the Scourge of the Abyss. The Bow of the Last Guardian has been rebalanced, as it was extremely overpowered in the beta. In its current state, it should perform very similar to how it does in the live game. The Saren Godbow has also been reworked and simplified. The overall power is similar to before, but instead of randomness, it gives 140% damage per shot, and 5x5 size enemies will always be hit 5 times. The Shadow Tendril's ability has been buffed, and it now strikes critically every single time. Ruby Bolts have had their special effect reworked to provide bonus damage based on your target's current life points. This also deals 5% of your life points to your target as recoil damage whenever activated. The When Arrow's Icy Chill damage boosting effect now works with special attacks as well as threshold abilities. This is a large buff to When Arrows and it makes them extremely powerful. The Surge, Dive, and Escape abilities are now all off global cooldown. This means that whenever they're hit, they will activate and they will also generate no adrenaline. Along with this change, the mobile perk can now be used in melee setups, as it will not take away half of your adrenaline gain from barge or greater barge. This is a significant buff to melee mobility and is a really nice change. The Equilibrium Aura has been redesigned to provide a 12% boost to your ability damage, but this aura also comes with a trade-off, which is that while it's active, you will never be able to critically strike. This makes it a solid option for lower level or entry level PVM setups, but at the end game, it's not so good. The Equilibrium perk has also been rewritten, and now it increases your damage by 0.5% per rank. It has also been renamed to Eruptive because the old name didn't really make sense for what the new effect is. And last but not least, a number of overpowered abilities in PvP have been weakened significantly, including Necromancy abilities, the Langsword special attack, and the Bow of the Last Guardian special. This should make it a little bit harder for PvPers to one-shot you from full HP when you're trying to train runecrafting. And those are all of the big changes in today's combat update. But I want to hear from you guys in the comments section down below. What do you think about all these changes? For me personally, I am so excited to see all of these core system changes make it in the live game. It almost feels like an evolution of Combat 2, and these combat changes all help modernize the combat system to make it better for existing players and new players alike. But anyway, that's all for me. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you very soon for the next one.